my name is Michelle Nkasa Ntalami. I'm the, the founder of Marini Naturals. Um, Marini Naturals is um, a hair care line, a quality hair care line dedicated to African natural hair for both men and women. I've um, been in the market for five years now. I always feel like I'm always a step ahead of what everyone else is doing, at least in thought. I always think ahead. I'm extremely creative. Um, I remember in, uh, in, in university, I did design, and um, my concept was um, rebranding a coffee shop, uh, an actual coffee shop in downtown Nairobi. And the way I did my project was so good that um, the coffee shop actually took up that branding and it was used as a case study with even Starbucks. So yeah, and um, because of that I was offered a scholarship to the US, a uh, partially paid scholarship. So I've always been that person who just thinks different. I like to think of myself like a Steve Jobs. Um, you know, think different, and that's me. So I will always do things differently from my competition. Uh, another thing is that I never really look at competition as the enemy. I always look at them as um, iron, sharpening iron. So if I see something amazing that they're doing, it gets me thinking like, wow, that's creative. I don't take it like, you know, um, must bring them down or must... Uh, outshine is like, oh, that's dope. That's actually quite nice. And I'd, I'd even shout them out or congratulate them. Um, so for me, uh, I feel like I always set the pace in my own way because Marini is a brand that I feel sets the pace, whether it's in packaging, it's in marketing, it's in communication, it's in new products. Um, yeah, I like to, to feel like we always set the pace when it comes to that. Um, and it's just something that I love to do. I love to lead. I'm very passionate about what I do and uh, by the time I am thinking of releasing this particular product line uh, it's been in, on my mind for at least a year so this packaging was on my mind for three years this new packaging um, the new logo I, I, I remember I sat down and I designed it and I just had to shelve it because it didn't have packaging that matched it um, but last year we were able to actually now release it in the market. So anything that I launch or release or do anything new, I've already thought about it maybe for at least a year. It's just brewing in my mind. But because, you know, um, my mind always thinks faster than what actually happens. So maybe, you know, I need to wait for funding or revenue needs to pick up and then we can plow that back into the business and release um, a new range. But yes, it's always thought of and even there's uh, something new that we're coming up with pretty soon that I'm sure I'll talk about. It's all natural. It's your holy grail. It's made so easy for you. My mom is amazing. Like, hi mom. <laughs> I never fail to mention her. She's actually my partner in my business. She's the most resilient, hardworking woman I know. And aside even from all those, um, um, she worked for the UN for very long. And my mom would go on peacekeeping missions, which are very, very dangerous. So she'd go to Angola, Mozambique, Cambodia to um, stop the war and just be part of the peacekeeping mission in the UN. So that's a sacrifice. Looking back today, I see what she sacrificed for us because anything could have happened. And she did that for her family um, to get us to a better place to make sure, you know, we have, we have a better life. And my dad was also very, very instrumental and supportive. Um, but seeing that as a woman, you know, it's like some kind of bravery it takes for a woman to do that. And that really, really motivated me until today. I missed my mom for so long because she'd always be away, um, especially during my formative teen years. But today, um, in my 30s, I look back and I'm like, wow, that actually shaped me into the woman I am today. And I would totally do the same for my family. So my mom is very key on that, um, on shaping me into who I am today. And I have other, other friends, um, women in employment and in business. I always say it's not just women in business that inspire me. Even a woman in employment inspires me. 
um, Sylvia Mulinga, you know, she's just such a tough cookie. I look at her, I'm like, wow, you know. Um, Julie Gishuru, um, Caroline Toko, there's so, so many women that I generally look up to. And I think as a woman, what I really appreciate and value is um, a strong, powerful woman who does not, who's not, um, she's still a woman, you know, like a perfect example is like Michelle Obama or Maya Angelou. Just by their presence and their words and just the way their decisions, the way they see life, it's so powerful, but they don't need to assert themselves and be, um, you know, extremely aggressive or step on anybody's toes but you can feel their impact so i really admire that and i like to think that i'm also like that or at least i'm shaping up to become a woman like that marie naturals has now evolved to be a brand that even men love yeah. and children Ch and yeah. people who have dreadlocks so we want a brand or a brand identity that is all encompassing yeah. that and that captures, yeah. that's all inclusive, includes yeah. everyone. I think it's just mainly because of the stereotype that a woman can't um, do it as good as a man, a woman can't run a company as good as a man, a woman can't um, you know, invest as good as a man or do anything as good as a man. It's a stereotype. But I always like to ask um, who created that stereotype and do we really have to believe it or um, tell ourselves that that's actually true. Uh, as women, we need to come together to break that. Um, so the more even the men see that, hey, these women are not playing, you know, they are stepping out of their shell, they are running companies, they are um, growing in the corporate ladder, moving up in the corporate world. Um, they're just crushing it and killing it in life. And I think we will have more leadership positions for women um, and we'll have a better story to tell as women. But it starts with you. I always say your mindset is your greatest asset. Um, if you as a woman think you're not capable, you cannot start a company like this, you cannot have a product like this, you will not have a product like that. If you as a woman tell yourself, actually, I do not need to be a Nivea, or a Revlon to do this. I just need to be Michelle uh, with the passion and the, and, the, and the vision to do this, then you will build that empire. I'm gonna be showing you something very interesting called the Michelle buns. Why buns? Because they look like buns. And why Michelle? Because I created them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came to me, I'd say by accident, um, I didn't, always think knew know that I'd want to go into the hair space when I was like 15 years old um, my father got sick and I wanted to that that made us as a family be live healthier so I also wanted to work with him in his journey of healing so I, I, I went natural in every way possible or at least I tried to in my diet in my fitness in my beauty regimen so one of the things was cutting my hair so, and my dad always loved short natural hair because it reminded him of my mom uh, when they were courting and dating and all that. So I was like, actually dad, like to make you feel better, I'm gonna cut my hair and grow it natural. So I actually did that. And then I couldn't uh, find products that could maintain my hair. So that's when I had the Eureka moment that, you know what, I have no products to cater to my short natural hair. I cannot walk around looking like this in as much as I'm doing this for dad and to be healthy. So then I started formulating my own products. Initially, it was not easy. Uh, not even for the, pro for the brand, for the concept of going natural. Uh, five years was a totally different story. Today, it's kind of cool to be natural. <laughs> like, by the way, if you're not natural, what are you doing, right? Um, but five years ago, 2013, 2014, it's like, who is going natural? There are very few, just a handful of naturalistas. So even the concept of going natural, let alone selling me natural hair products, that's like, no, you know? Um, so it, it was not easy to, to convince people. But we managed. Uh, I remember in 2015, we ran a, a huge campaign, online campaign called the Get Marinified campaign. I don't know if you remember it. But we picked like um, 50, 50 girls, like models, friends, 
family and put them together and styled them and showed people prove to people you can actually look good natural using these products and i think that changed the game for us <laughs> you look at a brand you're like oh my god all these products and you go to the supermarket and you're overwhelmed by the hair care aisle but um you really don't have to it's it's very simple there's a formula i came up with um, I should actually like patent this or trademark this formula, but it's basically cleanse, condition, moisturize, seal, style. It's a five step process. Cleanse, condition, moisturize, seal, style. You only need five products and sometimes even one product can do two steps. So that's how Marini, Marini is built on these pillars and that's how Marini um, was formulated. We have a cleanser, a shampoo and a co-wash. We have a conditioner, our leave-in conditioner, and also the one for the kids. Um, we have a moisturizer, which is the daily spritz. We have um, a sealant, which is the oil. And we have the styler, which is the butter and the gel. From a brand point of view, we are actually um, about to release our men's our men's line, our men's range. So the men will be very happy. We've gotten a lot of pressure from the guys saying that um, they already love their wives, their girlfriend's products, their sister's products. So they keep hogging them. So there's always a fight between a man and a woman using Marini. So the men ha have complained and messaged us in our inbox and email. And this has been going on for about three years actually. So we finally had their plea and we're releasing a beard care range. This is actually it. So for the men who want to grow their beard, who want to keep bumps at bay, when you shave, you get those um, unsightly bumps. This is gonna sort them out. And it's also a moisturizer, so it's a three in one. Then we also have a pomade that will create waves, natural waves without you. Remember how our brothers would go to the Kinyozi and then karanga their hair? So you don't need to do that. We have a pomade that's coming up um, that's actually gonna just give you your natural waves without any chemicals. So that's coming out in about two weeks. So yeah, you guys are actually getting the exclusive on that. I always say impact over achievement, meaning I choose to impact than to achieve. I, I do not mind accolades, um, achievements, awards are beautiful. And this whole um, <clears throat> showroom actually shows the awards I've, I've, gained, I've gotten through the times. But I think really what will fulfill me is to leave an impact and a legacy um, to inspire people. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's well and good to build a company and a brand like this, but I really think impacting people would be to change lives and to make other people believe in themselves that they too can do this, not just me. Um, <clears throat> I want a, a young girl summer to wake up and go like, oh my gosh, Michelle Salami, watch this interview and go like, this girl, Michelle Salami did this at, at, at a young age. I can also get up and start that fashion line I've always wanted to, or that um, cookery business, or that, you know, hair care line or cosmetics line. You do not need to be a multinational to do this. Um, so I wanna leave that impact from Michelle, what you'll expect is more legacy, more impact, um, more inspiration. I also want to start, um, you know, like a, a channel on my Instagram where I'll just give snippets and tips because I love, love, love sharing. I love giving, I love imparting knowledge. I think anyone who knows me knows that. So I can't stay with all of this within me. I have to give it out. So yeah, that's what I hope to do. <laughs> South Africa was amazing. I got recognized as the top uh, female entrepreneur um, in Africa by ABLA, which is a Forbes, thank you, which is a, ABLA is part of Forbes and that's huge. So we went down, got the award, got the recognition, got to meet so many influential people in business, in all industries, manufacturing, cosmetics, it was amazing. Um, and then Nigeria as well was fantastic. I was selected as the brand ambassador for natural hair in Africa by the African Hair Summit. So I went down to give um, my presentation. That was phenomenal because Nigeria is a big market. It's 
virgin, it's thirsty, it's ready for natural African hair. So Marini was very well received there. I remember I came with a bag full of Marini and by the time I was done with my speech, my products were sold out. I couldn't even gift the, the people that I wanted to gift a package. So that was, uh, that was good. And I have just also been invited uh, by Forbes. Um, for the Forbes Woman Africa <laughs> in Kigali in about two weeks time. Um, that's, I think, amazing because they handpick who they would like to come and be in the Forbes Woman Africa Forum in uh, Rwanda. Kenya is ahead of the curve. Um, I'm quite impressed. I've been around um, in Kenya in terms of packaging, and quality and just I'd say even just business business acumen I think we are good um, but I think we also in other countries there's more aggression or they believe in themselves more especially in Nigeria so you'll find very very many young entrepreneurs who've already started hair care lines their packaging may not be good their quality may still be subpar but they have the aggression and you know the, the the spirit to do it and they're doing it for us we're like no we need the perfect packaging we need the start where you are with what you have this was the packaging that we started with if you remember <laughs> humble beginnings very very humble but still this was good at the time people were like i love your packaging yeah and we've evolved from this to this but if I just kept waiting for this, this, this took a lot of money and time and, and resources. If I kept waiting for this, we would, maybe this is when I'd be launching. So you can't be on the back bench just waiting, waiting, no, just start. If you have the idea and you think it's good, um, have what you call a proof of concept, which is this, like just make a product, give it to somebody, let them try, let them say, wow, I like it. First thing that I have learned or that Marini has actually taught me is just to have your vision. You need to be a visionary. By vision, it means that I know where I'm going. I can see where I'm going. There's obstacles along the way. Um, there's things that will derail you, that will bring you down. People, situations, money, career, life, love, everything, you name it. But you see where you're going and you have to keep that vision. That for me would be my biggest lesson to people. Do not go into a business without seeing the end game or the end result. Otherwise, um, you'll just wake up one day and be like, I'm not doing this anymore. So that's very important for me. I feel the love <laughs> from people, like the love is real. Um, and maybe it's just also a reflection of the kind of person I am. I don't feel like I have gotten Yes, a few comments here and there, or a few, um, you know, silly blog posts here and there, but they never really move me, and I never even have the time. In fact, most of the time, if somebody sends me a link to something, I'm like, I don't have the time, I just move on. But in general, I really feel like um, people are more, people celebrate me because of what I am doing and the impact that I'm making to other women and men. In fact, I have also had men uh, thanking me so much for just starting Marini because because of me they're able to start you know something different or um, whatever their dreams were and I appreciate that I think I think if you love yourself and you believe in yourself people will love you and they'll believe in you if you tell yourself I'm a woman I'm gonna get criticized they will criticize you your asset your biggest asset is your mindset I feel like the biggest gift you can give yourself is believing in yourself so that's what I want everyone to start conditioning their minds to when they think of Michelle Salami and what she's done. I want someone to wake up and say, I did this because Michelle did. Starting Marini, I didn't get too much support actually um, from my peers in terms of, not friends, but peers in terms of other women. It was difficult. Um, but I think also the proof is in the pudding. When you start a product or a brand and people actually like it, then they tend to go like, they wanna associate, they wanna help you, they wanna support you. Um, but I also want people to know that you, you, don't, you don't need a crowd to believe in you. That's not, how the that's not how life works. That's not how the world works. You just need 
your mindset. And once you believe in yourself, you'll find that it's contagious. Other people are actually buying into your idea, into your energy, into your project, you know, and that's, that's how you grow. So um, that I, I feel for me, that would be the biggest impact I'd leave. Entrepreneurship is not cool. You won't look pretty all the time or, you know, sassy. No, 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 no. And that's why people get it wrong. I'm just dressed like this today because we have an interview together. You understand? But I mean, there's times when I look like crap. There's times I don't have time for myself. I have eye bags. I'm tired. I have a headache. And I think, again, social media is a contributing factor to that. You know, you look at an entrepreneur, you look at Michelle's Instagram, and she's killing it. No, I just post when I look good. I'm telling you guys, I only post when I look good. Whoever posts um, a selfie when they've just woken up and they've had, um, you know, like just only three hours of sleep and a pending project and this, no, right? Um, and that's, I think that's where we go wrong, young people go wrong. It's not pretty guys, you have to power through the ugly days to get to the beautiful ones. And I think I powered through and I'm still powering through every day. I've just learned to um, be graceful as I do it. I've just learned to also, you know, uh, take it easy, take life easy, don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, you're here to build a brand, not to send yourself to the grave because of stress. And it's okay if once in a while you fail and you fall. Yeah, it's just a lesson learned. It's not failure. Um, but don't don't look at the glam of it like, oh my gosh, I want to say I'm a CEO. I want to say I'm this. I want to drive my own car. Like now, you need to be patient. That Benz, that BM, that house, that yacht will come, you know, in due time. And you need to know that it's not pretty it's not cool but if you stick to it at some point it will be the most amazing thing you've done for yourself michelle is life basically i love life uh, in fact on my instagram bio my caption is ceo with an appetite for life so fun travel adventure friends family food dogs oh my gosh most of those things started with s <laughs> Um, I really, really enjoy life. I travel a lot. I just got back from Dubai for my birthday, my 35th birthday with my friends. That was amazing. I'm planning my next vacation in about two months, maybe. Um, so Michelle is somebody who I, I always say my brand, as you said, the Michelle brand is not just entrepreneurship. Um, and that's also, I think, part of the impact and legacy I want to leave for people. Like, have fun while doing it. Somebody who inspires me on that is Richard Branson. He's never worn a tie in his life. That's like his, his signature thing. And he's always having fun. Like, if you're not having fun while you're working or doing your business or building your empire, then you will quit. You know, you won't enjoy it. So, I, trust me, I have lots of fun with my team even. We crack jokes. We just bond and chill. Um, so yeah, you can expect that she's, Michelle is not just a serious entrepreneur only, but she also is full of life and just loves to love, love and live.